Hello and welcome back to Total Organic Chemistry. This video, I will be discussing reactions of alcohols with strong acids and what we can do with that. So by the end of this video, as always, the questions that you should be able to answer are how can I turn OH into a good leaving group? And how can I use that fact to synthesize alkyl halides as well as alkenes? If you'd like some review on the properties of alcohols or some of the other reactions that they undergo, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and take a look at some of those videos I've uploaded on those topics. Okay, so we know that if we have a generic alcohol here with R and an OH group, we know that OH is a poor leaving group. So because the pKa of water is around 16, so strong leaving groups are also weak bases, but because OH- is a rather strong base, it will be a pretty poor leaving group. However, if we find some way to protonate this alcohol, so we'll end up with this, R, and then OH2, and then we'll have oxygen with a plus charge, plus formal charge, this will actually be a pretty good leaving group, because the pK of H3O plus is about minus 2. So water, which would be our leaving group, neutral water, would be a weak base, and therefore a good leaving group about the same ability as chlorine or bromine. So how do we protonate these alcohols? Well, let's start with ethanol, a very simple alcohol here. And if we treat this with some aqueous hydrobromic acid, so HBr, the pKa of HBr is actually around minus 9. So a very, very strong acid. And this will give us the compound ethyl bromide. So we'll actually substitute this OH for a bromine. Okay, so how does that even occur? Well, we again start with our ethanol here. And like I said, HBr is a very strong acid. So what will happen is the oxygen here is weakly basic. So it will be able to pull off that hydrogen from the HBr giving us this protonated alcohol here with, again, the positive formal charge on the oxygen. And then, because H2O is a good leaving group and we have a primary substrate, then this will very easily undergo an SN2 reaction where the Br- will come in, attack that primary carbon, and in a concerted fashion, the water will leave, giving us the ethyl bromide product. Okay, so that's very convenient. With a primary substrate, we get a pretty clean SN2 reaction. What if we have a secondary substrate? Okay, so we'll look at this cyclohexanol, so our cyclic alcohol here. And if we treat it with hydroiodic acid, which is an even stronger acid than HBr, we know that this will also easily protonate the alcohol. So we'll end up with this protonated version of cyclohexanol. And then because we have a secondary alcohol, this will form a rather stable carbocation. So we know that secondary carbocations are stable enough to form. So we can just have this water leave, and this will give us the lone secondary carbocation. And because I- is actually a very good nucleophile, the I- minus can actually just attack the secondary carbocation, giving us cyclohexyl iodide in an SN1 process. Okay, so that's the reaction with HI. What if we use a different strong acid? So let's start with the same starting material, cyclohexanol. And we'll use sulfuric acid for this one. So again, sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. And the oxygen will, again, just pull off that hydrogen, giving us the protonated alcohol again, just like the previous reaction. And again, just like the previous one, we'll have the neutral water fall off as our leaving group, giving us the secondary carbocation. Okay, so that's all the same. However, whereas the I- ion is a good nucleophile, the bisulfate anion, so what we're left with after sulfuric acid loses one of its protons, that is actually a very weak nucleophile. 
so it won't be able to attack that carbocation to any appreciable extent. So are there any other nucleophiles in the reaction that we can think of? Well, if we're ever using strong acids, even if we have a concentrated solution of sulfuric acid, maybe 98%, we know that there's still a small amount of water there. So 98% sulfuric acid is still 2% water, and that can be quite a bit. So we'll actually have a water molecule come in here, and it could attack the secondary carbocation, which would revert back to our alcohol starting material. So that is definitely a reaction that could happen, and that is in equilibrium with this other reaction. So water can also act as a base, where it pulls off this adjacent hydrogen, and the bond to the hydrogen will swing down to capture the carbocation, giving us cyclohexene in an E1 process. So if we think about these two reactions here, we know that if we have a secondary or tertiary substrate, we can either form an alkyl halide with an SN1 process, or an alkene with an E1 process, depending on what our choice of acid is. So using something like HBr or HI will give us the alkyl bromide or alkyl iodide, respectively. Or using something like concentrated sulfuric acid, we'll end up with the dehydrated product, which is where the OH falls off, and we end up with an alkene. Let's finish up this video by talking about one side reaction that can occur. We'll look at this alcohol, where we have a secondary alcohol, and then this will be sort of branched next to it here. And treating it with HBr, what are we going to end up with as a product? Well, you could definitely imagine this product here, where we have the exact same substrate, and we've just replaced the OH with a bromide. But it turns out that this won't actually occur this way. To find out why, let's take a look at the detailed mechanism here. So we know that with a strong acid like HBr, we're going to end up just protonating the alcohol here. And this will afford us the protonated alcohol. As usual, we have the same substrate with the OH2 plus group instead of the OH. And then since we have a secondary carbon here, we can have the H2O leaving group come off to give us that stable secondary carbocation. And this is where the interesting reaction happens. We have a secondary carbocation that is adjacent to a more stable carbocation. So it's adjacent to a tertiary center. And in that case, we can have this hydrogen here actually shift over to attack the carbocation and leave the carbocation on the tertiary center. So that's our hydride shift, and if you need some review on hydride or methyl shifts and how they occur, go ahead and take a look at my video at the top of the screen here. And then finally, since we have the tertiary carbocation, which is much more stable, we can have the bromide nucleophile come in to attack that and give us the bromide product here. So it's important to note that because secondary and tertiary alcohols through these strong acid reactions, because they proceed through carbocations, rearrangements are definitely possible when they're applicable. So that can be useful or it could be a problem depending on what you're trying to do, but it's important to be cognizant of that and realize that those are side reactions that could definitely happen. Okay, so I hope this video helped you understand how alcohols react with strong acids. If you like this video or enjoyed learning about this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Facebook at Total Organic Chemistry and take a look at my website as well. If you are able, please consider donating to my Patreon page, which I will link in the description, and that helps me to continue producing these types of videos for all of you. Thanks for watching.